The investigation into this incident has taken the better part of a month, and I'd like to thank my staff for their hard work and their dedication to this incident. I'd also like to thank the families of all of those involved in this uh, incident for their cooperation with our investigation into a very, very tragic event that's affected not only these families that are here today, but the entire community. Over the past month, the department has conducted an, an extensive investigation into this collision. This investigation is still ongoing, but the department feels it has enough information to make the following uh, set of conclusions and an announcement. Alcohol was not a contributing factor to this collision. Cell phone use was not a contributing factor to this collision. The vehicle at the time of the collision was not traveling in excess of the posted speed limit. What we know is that the vehicle made an unsafe lane change that crossed over two lanes of Juniper, left the roadway, and put itself up onto the sidewalk, causing it to strike the two pedestrians from behind. Those pedestrians were killed instantaneously. The police department is waiting for one last piece of uh, evidence, uh, blood that was recovered at the scene uh, from the driver of the vehicle has been sent to the Department of Justice. We've cleared it for alcohol, but we have not cleared it for any other controlled substances. Uh, those results are pending. We expect to have them probably in the next couple of weeks. Based on the information of, in this report, the department will be requesting two counts of vehicular manslaughter be filed with the Merced County District Attorney's Office in this case. That report was sent to the District Attorney's Office yesterday. We expect a charging decision within the next uh, week or so. Well, right now, uh, the data collection piece is, has been the most important part of this investigation, right? We need to be able to show that we have some sort of criminal liability, not just your normal civil liability that you'd see in a traffic collision that you would normally report on a daily basis. We have a vehicle that m made a movement that was no apparent reason for it. That vehicle left the roadway. That vehicle took the lives of two people. Um, so you have to consider the criminal part of that. Billy's head and face were injured so badly that we could not view her or say goodbye. We could only hold her hands. Because of an app on our phones, I figured out something was wrong and went to find Billy. When I arrived on the scene, their bodies had already been removed. Unfortunately, I saw the blood from my wife on the sidewalk. And it was an image that will never leave my mind. Friday night, my daughter and granddaughter left. And for the first time, I walked back into that house by myself. The kids were all gone. Sat in a chair and realized that this is my future, my new life. Quiet, no sound, no people, no Billy. I didn't like it. That morning, I lost my wife, my best friend. My kids lost their mom. My grandkids lost their grandmother. We also lost Carol, who was like a sister to me, and our family grieves for her, as do her children and grandchildren. My heart just goes out to the families uh, that are all the families that are involved. Uh, super tragic. It's affected our community. Uh, there isn't a place that I don't go where I'm not asked about it. This investigation is ongoing. And if there is anybody out there listening to us today that has information, please do not hesitate to contact the police department at 357-6384. Ask for Detective Sergeant Dave Brum. He's our lead investigator on this case. And no bit of information is too small.